These are the calves I got back in back January the twelfth, I think. They're gonna be another ten weeks old, so I guess they'll be five months here in the next couple of next week or so. I'm gonna weigh them. I hope they're over four hundred pounds. They're getting close. Push them pretty hard. Uh, corn stalks, and uh, I just started cracking some of the corn. About a thousand pounds is what I cracked. Uh, they're pretty good. I got them in this little lot out here. They can get out there. Most of them lay out here when it's dry. There's a uh, the other steer barn back there. Figured I'd put a little bit of an action shot in there since all my videos are just talking videos. So I don't use the GoPro anymore. Having a full time job and family and farming, I don't got time to make videos typically. It can take about 10 minutes to do it, but I'm not going to spend four hours making a fancy video. Here's the Angus. They're going to be finished. See, they knocked the board off today. I'll put some uh, half inch lag bolts in it. So you can probably tell. That's what I used over there with a steel plate. And a five by five steel plate in between the boards. They put guardrail on there. I'm just too lazy to do it. But they're coming around. Got a pretty big, uh, bunch of, you know, pretty good storm this morning with a bunch of rain. It's uh, afternoon now. And, they're uh, calling for some bad weather this evening. I don't think it'll happen, but I guess we'll find out. Better be prepared than not prepared. Uh, there's one thing kind of aggravating. I got these on whole corn. I've always ground or cracked the feed, but you see that manure? Got a lot of whole corn in there. Means how that stuff's almost six dollars a bushel. It's uh kind of aggravating to see all them bushels of corn laying out here on the ground unused. But they say that you, they get everything they need out of it. If it's out there, they got all they needed out of it. But I'm gonna start cracking it. I've got uh, 16 that I'm gonna go get that are <clears throat> about a week older than these from my Amish fella that raises them. And then my uncle's got some, so that would give a, that'd be about 70 head in here. That'd be two pot loads. But I recently learned that the butcher shop that I help supply is gonna want all of them, so that's good. I know what my price is. That's uh, helped me quite a bit. Uh, a fella ran short on cattle and most of y'all know that it takes a long time to finish cattle and people want their meat right now. They can't wait a year and a half to get it. So he wasn't up to size and was nice enough to let me sell some of mine down there. It's his market, his butcher shop. But I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing and it helped. <clears throat> it's uh, nice to know that you can send five or ten calves every once in a while and you know your price and you know what you're putting into them it's not like when you're sending them up to jbs and you don't know what your price is you gotta be able to put a pot load together a contract being a small farmer the best thing to do is try to get hooked up with a butcher shop or open your own i thought about that at one time open your own butcher shop and just supply all the hogs and beef yourself and buy some but i'm not much of a butcher so that'd be a good route to go but yeah there's their feed they don't really like the powder but they eat it anyway i think it helps them i implanted all these 10 weeks i'll implant them one more time I used a I forgot which implant I used, but they're uh, they're growing, and that's what matters. A lot of people are getting discouraged about this 
corn price and fairness and cattle, but I guess that's uh, I guess that's why the government gave everybody a little bit of money to get through the hard times. It was bad enough last year. It doesn't really affect me because I have my market price set when I sell it at the butcher shop. But uh, we did send uh, the Angus. They went to Aurora. I think that's how you say it, Illinois. And uh, I think we got like 98 cents for them. Finished cattle. That was last fall. So we didn't tell the government paid us on that. So it helps out. I know there's a lot of people that are saying you shouldn't take the money and all that kind of stuff. But if it's there, it's part of it. A lot of people do take it. Oh, but I'm on some of these ag forums. And that's a touchy subject. Talk about government money and farming, but we used to have government cheese and that's probably why we have too much uh, milk in this country. The government got involved with the, the dairy market. I don't know, but that to me, they, they ought to stay out of all of it. It's hard enough to get by as it is. Anyway, we're getting, uh, we're making progress. Had to, uh, I sold a bunch of my cattle and didn't buy a cattle back. And I built my barn and then borrowed the money and bought the cattle back and starting over again. So I guess that's the right way you're supposed to do it. Some people say borrow the money to build the barn, but I borrowed the money for the cattle. I did it backwards. I don't know if that's the best way to do it for tax purposes, but that's what I did. But uh, if it wasn't for banks, I don't think most people would be able to farm. Most people. Some people can. The young producers probably won't. Yeah, that's about it. Uh, don't see any bottle calves in my future. I had to, I had to make days about 30 hours instead of 24 if I was going to do that. When we first got these things, they were real skittish, scared of you. Now at least you can touch them. They're warming up to me. Took them a couple of months. Anyway, that's enough of the boring videos. Thanks for watching.